Our voice as we pray like this. Every outstanding good thing in my life be perfected in the mighty name of Jesus. Every outstanding good thing in my life be perfected in the name of Jesus. Every outstanding good thing in my life be perfected. Be perfected. Be perfected. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh Lord, my Father, I am work. I'm your work in progress. Progress your work in my life. In the name of Jesus, Father, we are, we are your work in progress. Progress your work in our life. 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 In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The highest that I've ever been shall be the least I will become. In the name of Jesus, the highest that I've ever been shall be the least that will become. In the name of Jesus, the highest that I've ever been shall be the least that will become. In the name of Jesus, the highest that I've ever been shall be the least that will become. In the name of Jesus, the highest that my children has ever been shall be the least they shall become. In the name of Jesus, the highest that my children has ever been shall be the least they will become. In the mighty name of Jesus, the highest we have ever been as a child, it shall be the least we will become. In Jesus' mighty name. Then we pray. Amen. Every enemy of my full scale laughter. You shall not succeed. Die in the name of Jesus. Every enemy of my full scale laughter, you shall not succeed. Die by fire. 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 In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Whatsoever that hinders me from intimacy with God 
expire by fire in the name of Jesus. Whatever he does me from eating this with God, expire, 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 expire in the name of Jesus. Whatever he does me from eating this with God, expire in the name of Jesus, 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 and so shall it be in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Father, we humble ourselves before you that you will lift up us all, even individually and collectively as a church in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare and affirm that to you alone that we have come. For unto you is the gathering of your people. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ and ask, so Father, that by that same blood that speak a better thing than the blood of Abraham, that each and every one of us individually and collectively will be acceptable before you now and evermore in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, as your word comes forth, give us a heart that is receptive. Give us a disposition, oh Father God, that seeks to be doers and not just hearers. For we know in that that we are blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. And as your blessings, oh Father God, endure forever. That which we shall receive of you today, Lord Jehovah, shall lead us even into eternity. In Jesus' name we pray. We come against every devices and works of darkness. Even such as mortars to seek to distract, we come against them by the blood of Jesus. We silence them. And we kick them out from here. For the Bible said, the wicked shall not be found in the congregation of the righteous. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. And the people of God say what? Amen. You may be comfortably seated. Hallelujah. Amen. Today we are doing the part two and the concluding part of our two-part series that we started last week, which was 19 ways to choose failure. Praise the name of the Lord. And then last week, we covered nine of those 19 ways with the objective and goal and aspiration and aim and desire that we finish the rest 10 on today's occasion. And last week, the nine that we touched on or covered, as the case may be, as to the ways to choose failure included, that if you want to choose failure, then you must lack self-discipline. Praise the name of the Lord. And we also say that if you want to choose failure, you must lack perseverance. And we also say that one of the ways to choose failure is to have unwillingness to swim against the tide or swim against the current or the crowd. We also say that one way to choose failure is by lacking planning because it is known that he who fails to plan automatically plans to fail. And number five, we say if you want to choose failure, then you must have fear of failure because fear of failure in itself can be paralyzing and lead you to take no action whatsoever. Amen. And we touched number six and there we say that if you want to choose failure, you must want too much too quickly. That is, you must be in a habit of biting more than you can chew. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And on number seven, we said if you want to choose failure, then you must lack self-belief. And we define self-belief for a Christian in contrast with self-belief for an unbeliever or a person who is yet to be born again. Praise the name of the Lord. And number eight, we said if you want to choose failure, you must lack humility. The lack of humility is a way to choose failure. Praise the name of the Lord. And we, had, and we said in that part that it has been scientifically proven that those who have humility are more liable to succeed than those who lack humility. Because the lack of humility lets, makes people to think that they know everything. The lack of humility makes people to think that when they know like 2%, they think that that 2% is 50%. The Bible says, let he that thinketh he stands, take heed, you know, lest he fall. So the lack of humility is a choice for failure. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And in number nine, we mentioned last week, we said that if you want to choose failure, you must be somebody who is expert in finding and making excuses. You must be an excuse addict. Praise the name of the Lord. You must be somebody who is suffering from excuse for everything disorder syndrome. If you have that disease, then you are on a good path 
to choosing failure. Praise the name of the Lord. So we'll continue with the rest, which forms the part two and the concluding part of that two-part series as we began last week. So today we want to look at unwillingness to network. Unwillingness to network. Unwillingness to have a social, a healthy social network is a way to choose failure. Praise the name of the Lord. It might shock you to know, and I was surprised no less myself, that some research in America shows that living with zero social network is as unhealthy as smoking. To live with zero social network is as unhealthy as smoking. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You will miss several good opportunities in life if you don't invest your time to build healthy, strong relationships. I say healthy, strong relationship, not the unhealthy one, because some people have unhealthy, strong relationships. As our brother tried to encourage us earlier on, severe yourself from unhealthy, strong relationships and instead build healthy, strong relationships. Amen. Amen. Healthy, strong relationships are people that can help you. People that can help you. Don't always seek a circle where you are the big fish, where you are the top man, where you are the boss man. If you are the highest in your circle, you are in a circle that is unhelpful to you because they cannot challenge you, they cannot engage in, with you. You have little or nothing. In fact, you have less than nothing to learn from them. Therefore, you will, before you know it, you begin to stagnate. And as soon as you begin to stagnate, you begin to retrospect, you begin to go backwards. Praise the name of the Lord. So always not be afraid to include in your circle of relationship those from whom you can learn from. Those from whom you, in fact, even if they intimidate you in a good way, from their status, from their ambitions, from their aspirations, from their, you know, don't seek a prayer group where you are the only mighty prayer warrior. Seek a prayer group where some people are praying, you're looking at them from the corner of your eye and you're telling God, I like to pray like that. God, I like to pray like that. Praise the name of the Lord. That's how we grow when we have a place we can emulate. Praise the name of the Lord. So seeking social, social network is a way to evade failure. But unwillingness to network is a choice and a way to choose failure. So do not underestimate the importance of healthy social network. Our relationship can help us to reach out to others and to convince them to work with us, not to work against us. Networking helps us meet exactly those whose interests align with our interests. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I remember some months ago, I was just having a chat with one of our young stars here, and she was talking about uh, her friends in school, how they are fast to their belief and all that. I said, okay, what you need to do is call a meeting of all your, those your friends and tell them that you have sacked them from being your friends. Praise the name of the Lord. Call a meeting of them and sack them and tell them, I notice that you are antagonistic to my faith. Therefore, I dismiss you all from being my friends. Go and go your own way and reconstitute another friend. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Number 11 way to choose failure. Number 11 way to choose failure is inclination to give up. It's always easy to give up and I've been a victim of it and sometimes I practice it because it's comfortable. When things get hard, you just go under your duvet and put your duvet over your head. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Inclination to give up is a way of choosing failure. Giving up automatically leads to failure. Unsuccessful people tend to give up way too easily and way too quickly than successful people. Unsuccessful people dream of succeeding, succeeding smoothly without too much effort. When you dream of succeeding with little or no effort, it is called daydreaming. Day what? Daydreaming. Daydreaming. They say if wishes we are horses, beggars we ride. 
daydreaming is when you dream with no intent to apply any effort, to make no effort, to work not on your ambition. It's called daydreaming. It's also called fantasy and wishful thinking. Amen. Daydreaming is an extremely real way to success. Daydreaming is an extremely real way to success. So young stars, I know some of us who are not so young, we would have learned this by experience. If you are my age and you have not realized that it's not a way to success, it means uh, there is something more big, bigger problem underneath. Amen. As they say, fool at 40 is a fool for, for more. Uh, it cannot be forever. If Jesus enters, it will change things. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Giving up when the going gets tough will always be more comfortable. Young stars and every brethren, you need to know it. Giving up when the going gets tough will always be more comfortable. I remember in the early days of my coming to this country, things were so hard for me that time. In fact, at one point, I wanted to go back home, praise the name of the Lord. Uh, but by that time, my wife and children had not come. They were still in Nigeria. So I said to God, can you just help me go and condition the heart of my wife that I'm coming back? Just go and explain things to her. Praise the name of the Lord. So that when I arrive, it will not be too much difficult. Amen. Because already her friends already know that I've gone now. Then all of a sudden, back to square one. Which kind of village people is that? Amen. Hallelujah. So giving up is always comfortable. And God is not after your comfort than he's after his purpose. That's one of the misalignments we don't concern. God is not concerned about your comfort as he is concerned about his purpose. Amen. That's why when Jesus prayed and said, take this cup away from me, God said, never hala. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. After all, when we had the meeting in heaven, he said you will go. Amen. I didn't force you. It's you that said you will go. Uh -huh. You don't go now. You will stay there. Praise the name of the Lord. You will complete your work. That's why we sing. You have been doing your work in my life. Father, perfect your work. You have been doing your work in my life. Father, perfect your work. You know, when we sing it, we sing it joyously because we think that the work he's doing is to make you the chairman of Bank of England. You never know what the work is doing. He may have another work. He wants to send you to, to, to Somalia as evangelist. And you are not telling him perfect the work. And so he say perfect the work, I you tell him now. And then you start crying. Amen. So before you sing that song, meditate to and reflect and see and find out the work he's doing. And then ask grace to align with the world because you are asking to perfect. And you don't know that the work he's doing is different than the one that you have in mind. Praise the name of the Lord. Because most times we sing it. And if you are honest with yourself, as I attempt to be with myself, you will know that when you are singing it, your mind is about all the testimony you give in church. You, it doesn't occur to you that the work that is, is different from your work. When you told Peter, he said, follow me. I will make you fishers of men. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. But the good thing is that God's work is always better than our work. Amen. And God's work is with reward and with joy. Amen. Hallelujah. So inclination to give up. Don't give up when confronted with difficulties. It is not important if you occasionally fail or fall. What matters is that you keep trying until you can accomplish your aims. You know, Jesus on the way to the Calvary, he fell a number of times. Did he stay where he fell? He stood up and carried the cross again. So that's what tells us that when you fall, it's not the fall that is the issue. What is the issue is will you get up from where you fell and continue to your objective? Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Another way to choose failure. And this one, we all fall prey to it most of the time, except if we are mature and we are broken. Another way to choose failure is to be resistant to advice. 
But before I go on to all that, I want to just touch a little bit on the no inclination to give up. Now, there's a popular saying that says, no pain, no gain. We need to internalize that, we need to have a revelation of that, and we need to anchor our life on that. No pain, no gain. If you ever ask any mother, she will tell you that. The gain and the joy of a baby came from the pain of childbirth. Praise the name of the Lord. No pain, no gain. Youngsters, all of the rest of us, no pain of studies, no gain of exam success. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. No pain of studies, no gain of exam success. No pain of suffering, no gain of triumph. Now, let's quickly look at Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 to 11, which is where we read. You will know when the, the name of Jesus was given to him, the Bible says he will be called Jesus because he will save his people from sin. He is also to be called a man because he means God with us. Now, look, that was the name of Jesus. But now, later on, there was power which God infused into that name. And let's quickly look at uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 6 to 11. We are talking about inclination to give up as a choice and a way to failure, and the reverse of it being a way to success and to triumph and to accomplishment and to glory. Now, in verse 6 to 11, Philippians chapter 2, the Bible says, Who, that is referring to Jesus Christ, be in the form of God. That means he was God from, from before. Thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Verse 7. But Jesus Christ made himself of no reputation. That means he stripped himself of all the honor and the glory of being God. And he took on upon him the form of a servant, as in a man, and was made in the likeness of men. That means he fell rather not not fair he came down from glory into the level of mere men praise the name of the lord verse 8 and being found in a fashion as a man jesus humbled himself and jesus became obedient unto death not just ordinary death not the death of euthanasia not the death of dying in a comfort you know big hospital but even the death of the cross. Praise the name of the Lord. Verse 9. The Bible says, We are of, and this is where we are going, We are of God also had highly exalted Jesus and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things underneath the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let's go back to verse 9. The opening verse of verse, the opening word of verse 9 says, We are rough. We are rough. We are rough means they are off. They are off means consequently because of this as a reward of this, following on to this. So the power that God put in the name of Jesus, that the dimension of the name of Jesus, any finish about, was consequent on Jesus' suffering. In verses 7 and 8, as, at 9 in verses 7 and 8, because Jesus accomplished what he was meant to accomplish, God therefore put that power in the name of Jesus Christ. So it brings us to what we said earlier on, no pain, no Gain. Some of the misnomer and some of the error that we have been led in Pentecostal era is that we are taught that blessing is an awoof. And I've told us in this church, blessing is not an awoof. Blessing is not an awoof. God will bless you on the basis of your relationship with him. Then he will bless you on the basis of what you do for him. Check out Abraham. He doesn't just go, Father Christmas, bless me, bless me, bless me. So the greater your intimacy with God, the, great, the more quality your relationship with God, with God etc., etc., the more you are entitled 
to the blessings of God. And the more God is covenanted to bless you. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So no pain, no gain. Amen. We Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now we are on to being resistance to advice. Being resistance to advice is an express way to choose failure. Being resistant to advice in an express way to choose failure. Some people fail because they need to accept valuable feedback. Instead, they prefer for various reasons, perhaps best known to them or not known to them, to argue why they believe their actions are right. Now, there's a difference between battle and there's a difference between war. Now, war is made up of battles. So, battles are composite parts of war. Some people like to win the battle and lose the war. Praise the name of the Lord. Some people like to win the battle and lose the war. So they always argue why they are right, even when they are not right. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. People who argue such, they are resistant to advice. And resistance to advice is an express way to choose failure. Resistance to advice is what? An express way to choose failure. Such type of people, they like being right in their subjective point of view than opening themselves up for feedbacks. The reason for this is simply listening to feedback and other people's advice resembles acknowledging their failure. So some people, you give them feedback, you give them advice, they immediately interpret, interpret it that you are slighting them, you are talking about their failures, and because they are not brave enough to face their demons and face their failures and conquer it, they shrink from it and they become defensive. So being resistant to advice is a way to choose failure. Receptivity to wise advice is vital to safety and success in life. We see that in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14, and in Proverbs chapter 24, verse 6. Number 13 way of choosing failure. A way to choose failure is refusal to learn from your past mistakes. A way to choose failure is your refusal to learn from your past mistakes. Anybody who has the inability to learn from past mistakes is already on the path of failure. So your past mistakes is to be learned from. Why did I let that cup slip from my hand and break? I know many of us now have washing machine, but when I was growing up, uh, we children used to do the washing of the cup and all that. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And some very nice parents, sometimes you break the cups, the first thing they'll ask, I hope you are not hot and all that. There's some other parents, they will just shout, Ah, put the cup in China. Ah, what did you do with the cup? Praise the name of the Lord. The you that broke the cup as a child, you have to learn why you broke the cup. Then you have to understand that a cup with soap on it is slippery. Then you understand that when it's in that stage of washing, you have to hold it and be aware that it's slippery. Once you have learned that lesson, you are less likely to break any cup again. Praise the name of the Lord. But if you don't understand why the cup breaks, you will repeat the same mistake again. You become prone to breaking any glass until your mother says, no, any glass you touch, it breaks. Don't let her go near the glasses. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That shall not be your case in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Refusal to learn from past mistakes. That was just an illustration. Unsuccessful people are deeply hurt by their mistakes and failures. As a result, they do everything they can to forget their mistakes, wipe it away from their memory as a painful experience and quickly move on without learning any lesson. The problem with such attitude is that doing so will rob you of the important lessons that are learned from failure. Doing so will rob you of the important lessons that are learned from 
failure or past mistakes. If we choose to ignore important lessons inherent in past mistakes, we are doomed to repeat the same mistakes repeatedly until we finally get the message. Amen. That's why in companies, in industries, in organizations, in some processes, they have what they call root cost analysis. So even when a big project fails, costing millions of dollars or pounds, they sit back, they gather again, they can take them in the expensive hotel, have the weekend, and they will now begin to look at why did this thing fail? Praise the name of the Lord. And then they repeat it again, minus all the known causes why it failed. And then the chances of success become greater and even certain. We should apply that also to the micro levels of our life, to the individual levels of our life, and to the collective levels of our life as a church. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I mean, of recent, one of our sisters stepped up to the plate to take on the leading of the choir. You see now there's an ambience because God now knows that there is a constituted praise body in the church. And it brings a dimension of the spirit that wouldn't be there if that aspect is in there. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. That's how we learn, we learn and grow. Amen. Amen. So first time, like one of my, uh, one of my kinsmen is late now. He was the... Uh, what did they call them that time of Eastern region? He has a saying. He says, first time fool is not a fool. A second time fool is proper foolish. Praise the name of the Lord. His name was Dr. Michael Inyono Karopara. Amen. He was the premier of Eastern Nigeria in his days. First time fool is not a fool. But second time fool is proper foolish. So we must learn from our mistakes not to be second time or third time or even fourth time fools. That shall not be our Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Number 14 way to choose failure is inability to overcome distraction. Inability to overcome distraction. One's ability to ignore distraction can be central to the factor of success. If you cannot withstand the temptation of distraction yourself, your prospect of failure, your prospect of success suffers with it. If you continuously switch from Facebook to Twitter, to Instagram, and they have not launched another one, they call threads. Praise the name of the one. They just launched it. And as soon as they launched it, that man, I won't say his name, he went and posted there. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So you move from there, you go to Reddit, you move from there, you go to Chit Chat, you move from there, you go to TikTok, you move from there, you go to whatever thing that you want to go, and you circle back again. Amen. It's a malady called attention saturation disorder. Attention saturation disorder. Which means the attention capacity that God has given you, you saturate it with things that are irrelevant and unproductive and not positive. Then you have what is called attention saturation disorder. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. It's also called attention deficiency syndrome, ADS. They are compounded and fueled by useless social media interactions. Streaming of meaningless, fluffy, sensational infotainment. Infotainment is a mixture of information and entertainment. Praise the name of the Lord. It's called infotainment. There should be a distinction between information and entertainment. Praise the name of the Lord. And unfortunately, it's creeping into some church. Some churches now think they have to use comedians to translate, to preach the gospel. They have to entertain to preach the gospel. It's called infotainment. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The joy that we create in the church must be created in the spirit realm because the church is a spirit. The Bible says the church is the body of Christ. And if Christ be God and if God be spirit, it means then the church is spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. So all entertainment must start from the spirit and end in the spirit. If it happens that your body enjoys it, it is because your body, you have learned to, uh, what is it, mortify your body. That's why your body will enjoy the things of the Spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
So that was number 14. Yes, inability. Number 15, way to choose failure is procrastination. Number 15, way to choose failure is procrastination. The ability to avoid procrastination distinguishes successful individuals from many others. There are two types of challenges with procrastination. Number one is procrastination to keep putting off starting something. So there is the procrastination where you keep putting off starting something. Then there is the procrastination where you keep stalling on what you have started. You keep stalling within what you have started. Praise the name of the Lord. The second problem is procrastination between the starting point and a successful finishing point. That means you are frequently having prolonged stalling instead of timely walking towards your goal. Jesus said, said, to, said to that herald, he said, that fox, tell him that I'm marching forward and on the third day I will enter Jerusalem, which means I am not going to stop. As I have commenced this march into Jerusalem, there is no procrastination for me. Tell, go and tell that fox, I am marching forward. On the third day, I will enter Jerusalem. So if he wants to fight, let him be waiting. We have a fight. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Number 16 way to choose failure is failure to take responsibility. Failure to what? Take responsibility. And this is very innate, very natural with man. And we saw it as early as in Genesis. When Adam failed, God came to him and God said, Adam, what thing happened now? Adam said, now that woman is me. Okay. So in other words, he blamed God already. He blamed two people in one. Two people in one. One, the woman, and the giver of the woman. In other words, God, you should have known better than to give me the one that will cost him. So God said, okay, woman, what thing happened? The woman said, now the devil. Now the devil. So you see where that phrase and that word comes from. When people are caught stealing in church, they say, now the devil. They learned it from Eve. Eve say what? Now the devil. Amen. And that's why I told us the other time that when you blame the devil, you pay him compliment. When God now turned to the devil, the devil say anything. The devil just laugh. He say, Nami. He praise the name of the Lord. If they say, Nami, Nami. Amen. So all the na devil, na devil, you are just paying him compliment. And the thing is that you need to get the devil to pay you compliments. But you are the one paying the devil compliments. And one of the few people that got the devil to pay them compliments, even though the devil will never speak it, was Job. Because when God said to the devil, go and try Job, let's see. The devil went and tried Job and he failed. The devil came back and said, that Job, that Job. He didn't say anything, he walked away. Because the devil is so devil that even when he is, when you defeat him, he will not admit. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Failure to take responsibility. The unwillingness to take responsibility is closely related to making excuses. Both of them have in common the habit of seeking fault for our situation outside ourselves. Outside ourselves. That's why we must try and get some balance about some obsession about, you know, parts of your father's house, witches and wizards and all that. They are real, they are authentic, they are genuine. But make sure that you are not crediting more than they are doing to them as a way to be lazy yourself. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. As a way to be lazy yourself. If we don't assume responsibility for what happens in our life, we are not in a position to do anything about it. To solve the challenges of our life that we are confronted with, we must be in a position of control. Otherwise, anything that happens to us happens by coincidence, by accident, it is others, it is nothing to do with me. Which means we cannot do anything about it. One of the fortunate things about my life, which are very few, is that I've never had the privilege of blaming people. 
maybe because I'm the firstborn and all that. I have never. And it's not that I taught it myself, so I can't beat my chest up. But I don't have privilege of blaming people. I've never learned it. In fact, it got so serious that as I grew up, I don't even blame the devil. So if the devil is waiting for compliment for me, he will wait long. Praise the name of the Lord. I do not blame people. I don't have the luxury of blaming people. Blaming has never stopped anything in my life. So I take responsibility. When things happen to me, when you do me stuff, I examine. So you can do me stuff and I will not examine to myself. I show to you. He did me this, but what was he able to do me that? Because I made the mistake of trusting him. I made the mistake of trusting him. So I went to the Bible and examined whether to not trust people is a sin. And I found in my little knowledge of the Bible that there is no way where God says trust one another. So I can't even blame God. In fact, I owe God repentance because I did what he did not ask me to do. So now one of the ways I condition myself from people taking advantage of me is to trust you commensurate on the risk I'm willing to take on you. I trust you commensurate on the risk I'm willing to take on you. For the Bible says, woe is he that trust on the arm of the flesh. So you can trust people based on how they have proven themselves. You can also trust people based on the risk you're willing to take on them. So if you're a true man of God, they say that they are the or something, then you take that risk that oh, that man fears God, therefore, and trusts him with this information. It's a risk you take. And God help you. It's a correct risk. Praise the name of the Lord. We takes us back to no pain, no gain. If you don't take a risk, you will move in life. If you don't take no risk, you will not move in life. When I moved to this country, I took every, I can ask my wife, I used to drive them. In fact, was, at one time, between me and her, we owned three cars. And we gave away one. So I wasn't poor, I wasn't looking for one. But I didn't know that God was, was saving me. Because if I was in that country now, I would have done that. Because the thing that my body does not accept is woo woo just gets into me. Praise the name. And the woo has increased more than when I was there. But the last time I went there, I was looking, I was, I think I was going in, whether uh, there's this uh, Ulu Wala market and all that, and I was seeing people, was, I was just saying to myself, people in this country, they need to be given a word for being able to survive in this country. They need to give the hard-working masses, they need a word in this country. They need a word. How people are able to survive with no aid. But the government is, is good at on aiding them and stealing from them. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We have to take responsibility. We have to take responsibility if you wish not to take the path of failure. Number one quote. Your best character is developed in the furnace of affliction. Romans chapter 5, verses 3 to 5. First Peter 4, verses 12 to 16. Our best character is developed in the furnace of trials and afflictions. Amen. Quote number 2. Blaming the devil is as paying him compliments. That's my favorite quote, and that is the one that the Holy Spirit taught me. So I don't even, uh, uh, you know, I don't even, uh, you can do what you, I'm not saying that I'm immune to the devil, though. In fact, some of you that may know me, sometimes you can, you can push me to the wall, here yeah, and not me for the wall, yeah, but I'm saying, you are not going to have easy victory for me. I will fight you until, I'm not going to roll over and die. So no cheap, if you're coming at me, you are not getting any cheap victory. And as long as God be with you, you will not even get any victory. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? It's an open-ended question. And that question is for you to answer. So keep searching for the answer. But me have admitted that there is no who that can be 
against us because the devil has the power to kill the flesh. But God says, you should not fear he that has the power to kill the flesh, but rather have fear he that has the power to kill both the soul and the flesh and to chop them into hell. So let me say, just kill you, leave you for one uh, nice mob where they will use AC, they correct your body. No, when you kill you, finish, God will put you inside hell where you will be barbecuing yourself for the rest of eternity. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Number 17. You fail because you don't believe it is possible. It is called the little faith syndrome. You fail because you don't believe it is possible. You fail because you don't believe it is possible. There was once upon a time when it was deemed impossible that men will go to moon. But today they are even planning how it will become a holiday spot for rich people. So the things that you are thinking is impossible, it's all very possible. Because God has said, with God all things are possible. And to them that believe in God are all things possible. Praise the name of the Lord. So one way to choose failure is to believe. Or to fail because you don't believe it is possible. We find that in Luke chapter 11 verses 8 to 10. Sorry, verses 5 to 8. And Luke chapter 18 verses 1 to 8. Jesus in died indicated that people who worry a lot and people who live in fear have little faith. People who worry a lot and people who live in fear has little faith. People who walk around with a lack of confidence also have little faith. As a Christian, the Bible says, the righteous shall live by his faith. So your lack of confidence can at times translate in God's perspective to a lack of faith. So you now begin to walk, not only are you lacking confidence, you have now gone into the realm, the terrain of lack of faith, and which constitutes sin. So you now begin to sin and compound your situation. And as once you begin to sin, sin attracts the devil. It's like a shark smelling blood. Once sin is around you, the devil gravitates towards you. Because he smells a weakness. He smells a loophole. He smells a, 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 a pedestal. With, on which to attack the individual. His attacks shall fail in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Research shows that human minds unconsciously believe possibilities. Human minds, humans, uh, research shows that the human mind's unconscious belief about possibility informs one's level of effort and expectation of success from the body's behavior. So the more you believe, the more you will be enthused, the more you will be motivated to act. So your action is based on your belief. So the, if your action is not is subpar, it means you have to raise your belief as to this possibility. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So the more we believe, the more we can act. In anything, if you believe you are going to pass an exam, you will prepare for it. On the day of the exam, you will brush your teeth, you get on, you get on a bus, and you'll be there on time. But if you think you are not going to pass the exam, you will be looking at the bus you are inside. Let the bus uh, tie a bus so that you can have excuse. You know, I was going to tie a bus, so we didn't go there at time, so I didn't make it to the exam. It's because you didn't believe you. If you believe you will pass. You will want no hindrance to get into the exam hall. If you believe you will make the interview, you will not want any hindrance to get into the interview place. So our actions, unconsciously and subconsciously, follows our belief. Follows our belief. So a way to choose failure is to believe that it is not possible for you as an individual. For example, one study showed that athletes who have inaccurate positive beliefs about their abilities outperform those with accurate or negative beliefs about their abilities. So they did a research again in sports and they found that, that athletes who have inaccurate beliefs about their possibilities 
That is the overbelief, their overconfidence that they can accomplish something. They, those athletes who have inaccurate high beliefs, they are perform the athletes who have accurate beliefs or wrong beliefs. So that their high energy comes from their high beliefs. I can do this. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So if we don't want to be on the path of failure, we need to change our belief algorithm or our belief system. Mark 9, chapter 9, verse 23, Jesus says unto them, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. If thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. If thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. If our youngsters can believe that they can be in charge of the affairs of this country, it is possible. For, that's why we should knock down this idea of uh, they are teaching them how to be fireman. They are teaching, how can they fly you all the way from Lagos tonight to come and be fireman? Are, are you serious? Praise the name of the Lord. Are you serious? Amen. In fact, that one that is Prime Minister said, I learned that uh, he didn't just even come strength. His parents used to be in uh, Kenya or wherever, when uh, they pursue all of them from Africa, be Uganda or whatever. Amen. So they have been immigranting and immigranting until they arrive here. Amen. So all of you youngsters here, yeah, that I didn't make it, does not give you an excuse not to make it. Praise the name of the Lord. Are you hearing me now? Amen. Including the one that I know is going to work in the investment bank. Amen. 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 So don't let me, when I come from, uh, when I visit in my retirement, they say you're driving a bus. I will just drag you down from that bus. Praise the name of the Lord. None of you is allowed to aspire to drive a bus. You must open up your heart and believe. To him that believes, the Bible says, all things are possible. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ which threatens me. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Where are we now? Number what? 18. Number 18 way to choose failure is by not listening. Say not listening. Amen. The Bible says be quick to listen and slow to speak. But you see people who are headed the way of failure, they reverse it. They are quick to speak, even hardly ever to hear. And you see it in classroom, everywhere. You see, the teacher is teaching, the children are talking more than the teacher. Instead of listening, they are talking. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So one way to choose failure is by not listening. If you have a habit of not listening, you don't listen to man, you don't listen to God, then you have rightly, if that is your aim and objective, you have rightly choosing failure. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And number 19, way to choose failure. Number 19 way to choose failure is by being argumentative. You choose failure because you will rather argue. You will rather argue. Praise the name of the Lord. It's a guaranteed express week ticket to sucking is trying to be right instead of good. If you are more invested in arguing your point of view, against people trying to help you, then you are not improving yourself. You are subscribing to failure. Amen. For all our brain debates, you are blindsided from seeing your sorry state. In John chapter 9 verse 41, Jesus said unto them, If ye we are blind, ye should have no sin. But now you say, we see, therefore your sin remains. Therefore your sin 
remains because you argue you see when you are actually blind. You must allow a feedback loop, what is called a feedback loop in your, in your life. And what is a feedback loop? A feedback loop is where you succeed by doing something, trying something, then stepping back and getting feedback, getting results, learning from the feedback and the results, and trying it again at an improved dimension, at a higher dimension. But if you don't have that feedback loop because you're always arguing, you will miss out on improving your game. People who never accept truthful, relevant feedback never change for good. Never change for good. Most people suffering from this problem tend to be highly intelligent but extremely insecure. This is one of the diseases of highly intelligent people. Highly intelligent people can be extremely insecure. And hence they argue. Why? Because the more intelligent somebody is, the more they are able to rationalize their hoodwinking excuses to themselves. And the more their intellect is used as a defense mechanism to foster their fragile ego. That's why highly intelligent people can tend not to be receptive to anything because they have a know-it-all disposition and mentality. So those are the 19 ways of choosing failure. And as God will say, do not choose failure. Not even the way that seemeth right to man, but the end of which is death. And I pray for myself and I pray for you that you will not choose failure. Inadvertently or knowingly, whether by error or intent, you shall not choose failure, for failure is not your lot. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's rise as we take these few prayers. O oh Lord, arise. Purify my heart of every foolishness. In the name of Jesus, O oh Lord, arise. Purify our heart of every foolishness. In the name of Jesus, purify my heart of every foolishness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Whatsoever hinders me from greatness. Die in the name of Jesus. Whatever he does me from greatness, die by fire, 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 die by fire. In the name of Jesus. Whatsoever he does me from greatness, die in the name of Jesus. Die in the name of Jesus. Die in the name of Jesus. Die in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Amen. I delete my name. From the book of born for nothing. In the name of Jesus. I delete my name and those of my wife and children from the book of born for nothing. In the name of Jesus. I delete my name from the book of born for nothing. In the name of Jesus. I delete my name from the book of born for nothing. From the book of born for nothing. From the book of born for nothing. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. In fact, I will encourage some of us parents to administer these prayer points as daily capsule. Or periodic capsule to your children instead of scolding them unnecessarily or you know, excessively you just call them and you say pray like this I delete my name from the book of born for nothing praise the name of the Lord by the time they pray it every now and again you will see their character will change praise the name of the Lord I delete my name from the book of born for nothing in the mighty name of Jesus also, if you're always grumpy and melancholic and miserable, you also change the prayer point. I delete my name from the book of miserable fellows. I delete my name from the book of miserable Let them use their own mouth and say it. There is power in the tongue. Sometimes some of the errors we make is that we overpray on children who are able to pray with their mouths. You forget that that one they say with their mouth, carry power. Because the Bible says, can two work together except they agree? So when he's using his or her mouth and saying it, he's telling the devil, I now agree with you again. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And God will enforce that word. And God will say, you hear she's saying it, leave her alone. She says she's not going. 
Not the one that the parents say is not going. Then the devil says, the parents, huh? she wants to go. It's the parents that is stopping her. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I delete my name from the book of miserable fellows in the name of Jesus. I delete my name from the book of miserable fellows in the name of Jesus. I delete my name from the book of grumpy fellows in the name of Jesus. I delete the name of my children from the book of grumpy fellows in the name of Jesus. I delete the names of my children from the book of error prone fellows, mistake prone children, accident prone children, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Anointing for excellence. This is my life. Locate me by fire in the name of Jesus. Anointing for excellence. This is our life. Locate us by fire. Locate us by fire. Locate us by fire. Locate us by fire. Locate by fire. Locate us by fire. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. This next one, pray to the hospital. In fact, my wife used to pray for me those days. Powers that are using my weakness for evil against me fall down and die in the name of Jesus. Powers that are using my weakness for evil against me fall down and die, 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 fall down and die in the name of Jesus. Powers using my weakness for evil against me fall down and die, fall down and die, fall down and die, fall down and die. For the and that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As I clap my hands now. Oh Lord, let there be terrifying noises in the homes of my enemies. In the name of Jesus. Father, as we clap our hands now, let there be terrifying noises in the household of our enemies. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, as I clap my hands now, let there be terrifying noises in the household of my enemies. In the name of Jesus. As I clap my hands now, let there be terrifying noises in the house of all of my enemies. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Divine wisdom for profitable inventions, commitments, and productivity. Look at my life now in the name of Jesus. Divine wisdom for profitable inventions, profitable commitments, and productivity.